Hello, and thanks very much for joining with us once again. On behalf of the Bankbury Gospel Hall Green Gears, my name's Alan Mitchell, and it is a privilege just to share something from the Bible with you today. I would like to talk to you today about a man that we read of in John's Gospel in chapter number 5. Now, this man was a disabled man. He was paralysed. He was an invalid for 38 years and well, how miserable at life it must have been for that man almost 2,000 years ago. But I want to, first of all, just read two verses from John's Gospel, chapter 5, to you, because there came a day when the Lord Jesus met that man, and things changed. And first of all, I want to read the verse number 8 from John's Gospel, chapter 5, and it says, Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and walk. And then another verse from verse 14. And the Lord Jesus says, See you are well, sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. I do hope that you do take the time to read in your own Bible the full account of that man's experience in John's Gospel, chapter number 5. And you'll find that he was laid often next to a pool named Bethesda. Now, the reason for that would be was because there was a belief that when this pool sprung up, that the first person down into this pool when it had been stirred up would be healed. Now, in actual fact, this was probably nothing more than a tale. There was likely no substance to this story. And the fact is this, it was probably just a natural spring springing up from time to time. But that's what the man placed his hope in. You might say, well, what else could he believe in? And I suppose if he thought there was a little glimmer of hope, then he would wait all these years in the hope that he would walk again. But there came this day when the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, passed by. And the eyes of the Lord Jesus rested upon this man and the Lord Jesus loved him and had compassion upon him. And the Lord Jesus said to the man, do you want to be healed? Now quite strangely, the man doesn't say to the Lord Jesus yes or no. But his focus is still upon the spring of the pool and he says, well, when the waters are stirred up, I've got no one to help me to get down into the waters to be healed. But you see, standing and speaking to him that day was one that was able to heal him, one that was genuine, one that was true, one that had the power. It was the Son of God come down from heaven. It was the Lord Jesus himself. And in an instant, the Lord Jesus displayed that because the Lord Jesus, as we have quoted already, said to him, get up. Take up your bed and walk. And that's exactly what happened in an instant. A man that couldn't walk for 38 years and now in a moment he is getting up and walking and carrying his bed away with him. What a remarkable proof that the Lord Jesus loved the man. And what a remarkable proof that the Lord Jesus was able to cure the man. And to testify that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God come down from heaven. I wonder what the man felt in his heart at that time. The story tells us that he didn't really know the Lord Jesus after he had walked away. We we read that. That he didn't know who it was that had healed him. But I wonder today, do we ever take time to stop and to think of the good things that God has done for us and the blessings that we have received of God. There's an old hymn that says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you of what the Lord has done. I wonder even today if you've ever thanked God for all the good things that he's given you, physically, materially. But there's something very important in this story as well, that whilst the Lord Jesus had helped this man physically, The Lord Jesus is going to meet the man again and he finds him and he speaks to him again and now he's going to address a greater problem 
than the man's physical problem. And that's a man's spiritual problem. And when the Lord Jesus meets the man for the second time, as we read, the Lord Jesus now says, See, you are well, and so he was. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. Now we might say, well, what could be worse than not being able to walk for 38 years? But the Lord Jesus was pointing out to the man that if he remained a sinner, that if he didn't have his sin dealt with, and that his life was changed, that his latter end would be far, far worse than those 38 years that he spent not being able to walk. I wonder today if we have ever addressed the problem of our sin. You know, it's wonderful to think that the Lord Jesus that showed so much love and compassion upon that man and healing him has showed us so much love, compassion, grace and mercy because he went to the cross at Calvary and he died for your sin and mine, sharing his precious blood, opening a door, if you like, a way whereby you and I can get to heaven if we come and trust him as our own and personal saviour. If we believe in him, the Bible says, we will be saved. And so, have you ever considered where you're going? Not where you're going in this life so much, but where you're going to spend eternity. And the Lord Jesus was warning this man that if he didn't get his sin dealt with, then something far worse was coming his way. And so the Lord Jesus, while showing grace and loving kindness to the man that day, he also told him the truth. That truth would have reminded the man that God is a holy God and that God can entertain sin and that God doesn't have sin in his heaven and that if he wanted to be in heaven, his sin would have to be dealt with. And it's the same for you and I. Our sin has to be dealt with if we ever want to be in heaven. And that can only be dealt with by having our sins forgiven and coming to the same person that talked to the man that day, the Lord Jesus, and asking him to forgive us of our sin. I wonder if you're saved. I wonder if you know the joy of sins forgiven. I wonder if you know that there's a, pre a place prepared for you in heaven that you're going to. Well, you can have that assurance today. You can have that certain hope today if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal saviour. Sad to say, we don't again uh, read of any response in John's Gospel chapter 5 from this man, whether he believed the Lord Jesus or not, whether he trusted in him or not. How sad it would be to think of someone that had their physical well-being restored after 38 years and yet wouldn't place his faith in him and know his sins forgiven. But this is an urgent matter. And it's an urgent matter for us all. And if you haven't already done so, then we do trust that you will come today and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved. We thanks again for listening to us and join with us once again for the next message. And we pray that God will bless you.